Hello, welcome to Court of the Rings on twitch.tv slash LotraStream. I'm your community manager, Court Oven, and I'll be with you for the next hour. I've got some news about our upcoming anniversary next week. We have a small patch next week as well. It's also part of what we need to do before we start the anniversary. A little bit of news. We have got a casual stroll with scenario next week that you don't want to miss. I'll have more information about that in just a minute. And uh, we'll take your questions from chat. So it's uh, it's been a pretty busy week inside of the office, getting ready for our anniversary and everything else happening here in the near future. We got update 40, getting ready for preview, but we're not there yet. And uh, yeah, there we are. So let me move over to a smaller camera and I'm gonna put that video back. Maybe it'll even be automatic. It is. All right, so what you're seeing here is the new rewards for the anniversary. Let me actually call up a page here quick so I can get all the names. And make sure I've got the date. So the anniversary starts at 10 a.m. on April 18th. So that'll be a week from yesterday. It'll be Thursday, 10 a.m the anniversary event starts and it runs until 3 a.m. on May 6th. So through May 5th in regard to the anniversary event. We also do have our 17 year anniversary gift that starts next week as well. That also begins at 10 a.m. Eastern on April 18th. And that runs through April 1st of 2025 which seems like a long ways away, except what? We're almost to 2025 already? That's like a sci-fi year name. I watch movies where they're like, in the year 2025, robots, we didn't get our robots. There we are. All right, so anniversary is next week and we're all getting old. Uh, also, we have this weekend a 10% loot box embers and moats boost, and that runs through April 14th, getting shut off at 3 a.m. on April 15th. Also next week, we've got a VIP event boost. Actually, that's not next week, I think the week after. That'll be, yeah, that Monday. It's a April 22nd at 10 a.m. running through the 28th, being shut off at 3 a.m. Eastern on the 29th. That is our VIP event boost coming up. So that starts April 22nd. Uh, I would just also real quick mention we did have a patch this week. Uh, update 39.1.2. The main thing is tier 4 unlocking of the Depths of Makta Corvo, the new raid. That happened yesterday morning at noon Eastern. The Leading the Charge deed remains available for both the raid and the instances with update 39 until 3 a.m. Eastern on June 6th. So you can take a look at the release notes on Lotro.com, but we just did some tweaking to the Depths of Monta Corvo raid. Some of the instances, there was a little bit of class work in there as well, and a bit of odds and ends with the Forester event and other things. All right, so what you're seeing here are the new fireworks. That should be pretty obvious. I don't know if I, I can't put this page up yet because it's not yet staged, but uh, in the 17th year gift box, you will find the green dragon in fireworks, a 17 year frame and a new title called Merrymaker. And that's for free players with our 17th anniversary login reward. So if you picked up the 16th year gift last year, you will get the 17th year gift this year. If you picked up the 8th, gift last year, then you'll get the ninth this year, etc. So that's how it works. It's uh, what did you get last time? Is it what you get next time? Monster players are getting a slightly different version of fireworks called Victory Gear, G-Y-R-E, Year, Victory Year Fireworks, a 17 year frame, a plus 5% attack damage times five consumable, and a title as well called Killjoy, which I think is pretty fun. Uh, and so that's in the 17th gift box that kicks off starting 10 a.m. next Thursday. For the anniversary barter, we, are, we have the hat, outfit, steed, comparison, headpiece, 
bar and keg of the Green Dragon Inn. So, hat of the Green Dragon Inn, outfit of the Green Dragon Inn, steed of the Green Dragon Inn, etc. We also have the garments of the Green Dragon Inn, the tome of the Sienna Hamster. That's what you've been seeing up there. Uh, and that's just the one without the fireworks. And the one with the fireworks is from the Festivity Anniversary Barter. That's the tome of the Merrymaking Hamster. That's available both for Festivity Barter and Mithril. Uh, Mithril also available on the Tome of the Sienna Hamster and the Steed of the Green Dragon Inn, which you've also seen on the video here. We have a gift wrap selection box of said items and the Green Dragon Inn Tankard. That's the tanker that you're seeing there. That's from the Festivity Anniversary Barter as well. And then with the Keeper of Gifts Steel Token Barter, we have got Green Dragon and Fireworks, the consumable version, and the Monster Player Keeper of Gifts Steel Token Barter as the Victory Year Fireworks. And that's also the consumable version of that. So that's what we got coming next week with the anniversary for new rewards. The anniversary event itself is the same as it's been in years past. We have a guide up on locher.com if you want to find out more about the anniversary event. And uh, I would also say the Lotra Wiki has been particularly helpful. The player run Lotra Wiki can be very helpful if you get a little stuck trying to get through those anniversary location quests and what have you, because it gets, uh, gets a little complex. It'll test your knowledge a little bit. So there's some excellent walkthroughs in that out there. A home bar, correct. Uh, let's see. We're just going through chat here real quick. And yes, there is a green dragon theme. By the way, you will see that painting that had been requested uh, on the forums a while back. The green dragon in painting. That is not part of the anniversary rewards, but we know that you want it back and it's been gone for a while. And our intention is to bring that out later this year as a reward in some kind of future content. I believe it's the current thinking is probably an instance reward. And that'll be coming up here uh, later this year. So if you've been waiting forever to get that green dragon in painting for your house, we do have, yeah, see the one behind that dude there? Uh, we're going to be offering that later this year. So. Okay, it's more of a question for Orion or on Macmahal, Hall, I guess, but I'm wondering why you throw away the U39 Essence rework by just having basic essences in the raid instance gear again. I don't know the answer to that. Sorry. Um, clearly a subjective opinion about it being thrown away, uh, but I can't speak as to what the thought process is related to why the certain rewards are what they are. Okay. I think that's what we got. I think that's what I got for news. So I think we're going to head in game here today. I just ran through the Song of Waves and Wind up to the latest. And two weeks ago, when I was last with you, I ran the new instances. Did pretty okay, except I got raffle stomped by uh, the guy at the end of Isle. And uh, I've been trying to run that on my own a little bit on off hours as it were trying to see well can I actually beat this thing turns out the answer is largely no uh, and so I'm not going to try to do that again on stream <laughs> not yet I gotta figure it out first so I thought what we would do is one of the things we haven't done yet is go through the delvings uh, here with Corsairs of Umbar so I thought it would be fun to just run some of these delvings here today and uh there is much See to be up. done, and fewer hands by which to do it. I gotten close. So actually, I can ask Chat. Maybe Chat could help me out on this question. So, I, and I, I can't think of the guy's name right now. The, the guy who's stomping for snacks. Uh, that guy at the end. Anyway, he does this ground pound attack, sort of a slam attack, and it not only really. Um, halts me in place, you know, I can't really do anything, 
but it just takes away all my morale uh, over the course of three or four hits there. And so I'm fine in terms of melee tanking the guy, right? So I'm just beating him down and doing okay, but then his fire AoE hits, and so I kind of need to move aside, and I'm, something I'm doing when I move aside is triggering the ground pound, and I need to stop that, or at least mitigate it, and I don't know how to do that. So, chat, help me out here. Uh, what do I need to do to either prevent that ground pound attack from happening in the first place? Or how do I mitigate it? He roars before he does the ground pound. You have a couple seconds to move away. So it's just simply a matter of getting getting away. Okay. Don't move backwards, turn and run. See, I'm definitely a move backwards kind of guy. So that's good advice. Uh, Grounded Eagle, I have received that word from uh, someone. I think it was over Discord I got a contact from uh, again. And I'm trying to figure out uh, it, kind of myself what what I want to do in terms of um, providing benefits to the Giniverse Discord. So a little bit of a, it's a little political, unfortunately, but I, I need to sort through it. So I'm taking a little time to sort through it. So I typically do not distribute free points codes and such to discords. I briefly started doing it uh, a number of years ago now, and I very quickly learned that the number of requests gets very overwhelming very quickly, and the motives of sometimes the people I'm distributing codes to becomes something that I need to pay more attention to. <laughs> I'm putting it very nicely there. Uh, but I think maybe you know what I'm talking about. Um, and so ultimately I had to make a decision to not provide codes to discords. Period. And uh, so regardless of the size of the discord, I have to date not distributed any free codes and such to discords. However, if there is an exception to be made, perhaps what arguably is one of the largest Lotra discords in the name of Giniverse that we do tend to have a few members of the team who like to frequent. Perhaps I should make an exception. And so I haven't decided whether I actually want to do that though or not. Because do I want to? I don't know. How does the community feel about it? So um, maybe... Maybe that's something and get some feedback on privately either in the forums or if you just want to sound it out in chat. So should I start making exceptions for a couple of discords and then am I picking winners and losers? And how many codes do I give out? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I do have some limits, right? So sometimes especially if it's like you know, a thousand member Discord, five or six codes ain't gonna cut it. And, uh, so anyway, I don't know. I haven't really decided, but congratulations, though, on hitting 10k at the Giniverse Discord. That's, that's a big milestone. Gosh, Norbert, I don't know the question. I don't know the answer to your question. If you have War of Three Peaks, but not before the Shadow, will you be able to do the delvings on the War of Three Peaks missions when you hit level 150? Uh, 
I would need to look up what we've said regarding access to delvings. I think the answer is yes, isn't it? I think you should be able to. Because they're associated with War of Three Peaks, but I guess I haven't really looked, so... Maybe I should? Yeah, so I, I unfortunately do not know the answer if you can do that without having before the shadow. I can't remember what the access to the delvings is at the moment. How do you normally access delvings would be my question. I th did, did I put it in the guide? I remember writing a guide on like the introduction to delvings. I bet a Google search would call it up while I'm in combat here. By the way, if you're hearing the sound of machinery behind me, if some of that's getting picked up by my microphone, some of the banging and what have you, it's because uh, the neighbors are having a bunch of gravel and stuff put like, they're tearing out part of their front yard and installing gravel in it. And I got all these big gravel trucks right outside the house. It's not my house, it's the neighbor's house. But still, you know. This is Massachusetts. People live close together. <laughs> so... <laughs> Ain't like in Minnesota, where you gotta use some binoculars to see your neighbor. At least where I live. Oh, this could, this could get hairy. Uh oh. I am, do not have enough health. Oh shit. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I swore on the live stream. I do apologize. I don't want to die. Oh, I do. I do. All right, fine. So we do have a bull roar coming up. Let me real quick uh, pause the screen and take a look at the calendar quick. Let's see if I can get you more info on when we might expect a bull roar. Um, not for a little while. Could just be not on the schedule though. Yep, sorry, I don't have a I'm not seeing a bull roar on the schedule, but that doesn't necessarily that doesn't mean much. It just means it hasn't been put in the schedule yet. Alright, so it my guess is we're probably looking at uh, a couple of weeks before we would see our first update forty bull roar at the very least. So As soon as I know more, I'll let you know. I'm sure it's been discussed, it's just not on the... formally on the schedule yet, so. Also, hello. How are you guys doing? Hey, hey, where are the monkeys?
I don't know about Moobot in the calendar. I'm sorry. I have to admit, I don't really use Moobot. Uh, but other streamers do on Lotra stream. And so, you know, that's why it's there. I'm happy to have it there. But I don't personally really use it for much. So if there's something going on with the Moobot calendar, I don't know what it is. I apologize. I know that we do need to update the Lotro Stream splash screen image schedule because we, we have, uh, you know, a couple new things that have been happening. And that's cool. I wouldn't want to speculate as to the release date of update 40 at this time. Um, it's not going to be any time too soon, though. What do we have? I think it's. I think we're looking at. I think I'm looking at dying if I don't get back to the screen. <laughs> no. Crud. All right. This should be a safe spot. Let me go take a look again. Sorry. Right. Yeah, so about as much as I would want to say about update 40 at this time would be that we're looking at May. We're looking at May for update 40. Let's try that again. Yeah, I, I guess we uh, we're going to be doing that, and that's nice. So being able to name carry alls, that's very exciting. Very exciting. What are you going to name them? I, I have a couple of carryalls of a certain type, and I will probably just use number. So I'm just going to put a appendant with a 1, 2, 3, or whatever as it sits in my inventory. Just because I need that. I could say I would do something more, but I don't actually think I would. Man, these guys are pretty tough. Uh, I am on Delving 4 difficulty, so not, you know, kind of middle of the road there. Ingots, Scholar, Cooking Ingredients 1, 2, 3, etc. Oh, thanks. Yeah, so the this is the shirt we were giving away at PAX East uh, this year and and last as well. We, we The last time we made up uh, physical t-shirts for Lotro was for Before the Shadow. They turned out really nice and they're these cool Nazgul shirts. So, uh, one of our cooler shirts I think we've done. If I wanted to create a tier listing of our physical swag some someday, that might be a fun, a fun, uh, exercise. Although it would kind of suck because very few people have had consistent access to it, so that might almost make you feel worse than than before. We have some good uh, good swag, and you know sometimes you try your best, and it looked good on paper, but when you get the T-shirt, you're like. Oh. This will work. <laughs> Man, I am struggling a bit, huh? It would be nice to have a merch shop. Maybe someday. Uh, 
A uh, big picture on the shirt? Yeah, I could I could do that. But let me uh let me try to pay a little more attention to what I'm doing here. So I don't, I stop dying. Uh, was the keg and bar shown earlier a housing reward for anniversary? Correct. Uh, that specifically, let me... I think I need to call up the sheet real quick again. There we go. Uh, that specifically is the green dragon in bar and keg and that's available with the anniversary barter with the anniversary festival that begins next week Uh, you can use the regular Lotro store if you are on Steam, and you can use the same GDO market as everyone else does as well if you're on Steam. But I don't believe that the uh, Lotro market is formally a part of Steam. I'm so doomed. Yeah. Alright. Uh, does the bar come stocked with ale? I think that that's your, your choice. You can put whatever you want in there. Cider. Ale. Sandwiches. Maybe some fruit and veg. I've spoken about physical swag in the past. The main thing that would need to be done in order to facilitate it would be a legal agreement between all the different groups that are involved in the Lord of the Rings Online. You know, all the licensors and corporate entities would need to figure out who gets what, how the structure would work, and it, it's a big, big task, and one that really has not been able to be uh, s strongly considered to date. Maybe someday, but uh, we'll see. take out these dudes. Uh-oh. Nope, the answer's gonna be no. Let's see if I can duck out. No. Alright. I guess guess I should have made it a little easier. The World Hobnanigans Cup action? That would be fun. I would love to see uh, 
see a way to do like a spectator cam or something like that for Hobnanigans. I'd like to see a bunch of work done for Hobnanigans, frankly. Um, but that's a task that we'll see if that really ever comes to fruition. Maybe this is controversial. Maybe not. Maybe I'll be accused of being a little too PC or something like that. But so I'm a I'm a vegetarian, a long time vegetarian. Uh, what about thirty some years now? Thirty five or so years. Well, at least thirty years. Anyway. I've been a vegetarian a long time, and I don't I don't really make a big deal about it on stream or anything like that. But I don't really like that you're actually hitting a chicken and popping the guns. I would like to see us just not like it's. I mean, I get it. It's fine. But at the same time, if I were to redo Hobnanigans, I think I would turn it from a real chicken into some kind of like hay-like chicken object. And uh, that, it just call it done. It, it would make it more sport-like, maybe actually have a little more ball physics or something, and then also do that, so. Might you spare a moment? What news has come in with the tide? I mean, yeah, it's fine. Like, I, I, it doesn't actually really offend me. It's just that if I were to redo it, I think I'd like to turn it into like a chicken representation and then give it a little more ball physics or something like that. Yeah. Uh, this time we, it was a, it was coincidence that Hobnanigans and Buried Treasure happened at the same time recently. Hobnanigans happens, what, generally once a quarter, and it, it just sort of goes on a regular rotation, and it just happened to go to overlap with the Buried Treasure event this time. Might you spare a moment? I actually want, I don't know, A little worried about going back in on four. I should maybe got the delving garnet for three. And I think I I think we could do some work on hobnanigans related to. Uh, you know, there's uh, some mechanical tweaking in that. That if you were really going to try to do it upright, I don't think I can do that. I don't have one. I'll have to go in on four again. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, like it doesn't, I, you know, even if you want to be a little like hmm, about it. The chicken's not really getting hurt how it gets. It's fine. It's not taking damage. It's fine. It seems to be okay. But still. But still. Part of it, though, too, is that I think I would like to see a little physics work done with the Hobnanigans ball. And I think that turning it into more of a ball-like object as a result would therefore make more sense.
Yeah, it's true. I think Hobnanigans is, you know, it's got its fans, but I don't think it gets a ton of usage. And maybe that's okay. You know, it, it's just kind of not everything that you always do throughout the game's history is going to be able to be maintained and expanded upon. And, and maybe Hobnanigans is where it needs to be. You know, it's a little enjoyable distraction for those who want to take the time to seek it out and do it, but it's not, you know, a core gameplay thing. And maybe that's how it should be, right? That said, I've always felt that it had a ton of potential, and I find it fun. It's just... And we've done work over the years. Well, not a lot of work, but we did work, what, maybe five years or so ago to update the rewards and, and do some work related to it. And I think that that was positive. And so I just like to see us do a little more like i don't know that it actually needs better rewards i you know i mean i appreciate the sentiment on that but at the same time maybe you don't maybe it doesn't need better rewards. maybe it's okay just that it is something that is not considered mandatory or that you really have to worry about if you don't want to maybe that's all right you know But, if, if I had the skills of Orion and the powers of Severlin, uh, I, would, uh, I would take the Hobnanigans chicken and turn it into like a hay ball, a big one, almost Rocket League style, right? You know, big ball. And then add a little more bounce physics to it. I would make it so that you could have AI teammates, if at all possible. I feel like that might be possible. But maybe not. And some kind of method to be like, yeah, we're fine with however it is right now. Like, we can bypass the start mechanics and be like, yeah, okay, I know it's just one verse two or whatever, right? Let's start anyway. And allow that to take place. And then I love the idea of having a spectator mode as well, where you could maybe pop between cameras of the various players so that if you wanted to be a, a spectator commentator on Twitch or something like that, you could do that. I think that would be a lot of fun. I also like the idea of a two-player Hobnanigans field as well. That sounds cool. Dev hacks. No. Advantage person who gets to make the codes. And yes, that reflect corruption is kind of kicking my butt, is it not? So. Alright. Yeah, like the idea of a spectator mode and camera mode. I mean, you could fire the imagination and, and uh, do a lot with it. I have a couple of times, you know, inquired a little bit about what might be possible and what isn't. And there are some significant performance-related technological challenges that come into play uh, that make it a little on the risky side, kind of, to start allowing others to like pull out cameras and things and that's one of the main reasons it hasn't been able to happen yet but i'd love to see it someday too maybe it'll never happen but sure would be cool
All right. Uh, I have not heard anything from Orion about anything he might have said uh, while I was out. <laughs> I understand he's been busy. Uh, I really, it was awesome to see him doing a Q&A last week on the show. And he also did a very extensive, like, three-hour sit-down with Bloodborne on Twitch a couple of weeks ago. Or was it last week? What week is it? Yeah, it was last week. And, um... So he said a whole bunch of things that I, I'm not sure what all he said. I've listened to much of it, but I haven't gone through all four hours. I've been busy. So I, I can't really speak about what he might have been speaking about, but... I understand people had a uh, mount to pick from as well. We do apologize for the reasons for that distribution, but at the same time, that was a pretty cool gift. What all did you pick? I bet there was a lot of people picking up that red painted skeleton steed, huh? That would be probably my pick. I don't know. Was that the was that the big winner? Probably, right? Seed of the Dusk Watch was another. That's cool. Harvest Math. All right, so maybe they, maybe we had a lot of good options to pick from. I just know I hear occasionally about the um, challenge of getting that red painted steed coming. So. Good on the research papers there. And there's a hive. Uh -oh. Man, I am not doing so well on this stream. I, uh, I'm going to have to up my game and or lower my delving difficulty down to three. It's too bad. Fantasia? So I feel we'll run delvings for a little bit, and in the near future here, I want to put up... I think I'm going to create a forum thread is how this is going to work. And what I'll do in the forum thread, I'll do it like a week prior. And I'll be like, I on this Friday at noon, I'm going to run Depths of Mach de Corbo. I need 11 people who don't mind gimping it up live on camera and just sort of hang out and we'll run through this thing. We'll run it. So that's the plan in terms of 
live stream here in the coming weeks. I, I'm going to do a Mach de Corvo hour. And I don't know how far we're going to get. I mean, I am not a raid leader by any means. But I can run content. Mm, oh well, except for this, apparently. Run away! Run away! Need to run out my cooldown a bit, so I don't, do not die like that. So it should be fun, though. Uh, the you know maybe we'll do good, maybe we'll succeed, maybe we won't, maybe we'll noob it up, but we're gonna go into the space and just have some fun and enjoy that our time running the new raid here and i think what we'll do is maybe not next week because it is the anniversary next week so i'll probably I, I haven't really quite decided what i'm gonna do for the live stream next week there's a chance i was kind of thinking maybe i should just go in on the live game world and use that as my anniversary stream so uh for the noon stream next friday would be just popping over some of the worlds and hanging out and getting a little nuts you know so that would be fun i think that'll be next friday so then maybe mock de corbo would be the friday after that but i also was thinking about doing another uh run through a few more of the delvings here i'll get some lower level garnets because whatever and uh not die so much and cruise through them a little easier Interrupted. Okay, so I could even go maybe a little long on Friday because it does take, you know, even if I do 15 minutes per world, which isn't a lot of time in terms of actually sitting around and doing stuff, but if I do 15 minutes per world times however many worlds, that's a couple hours really. So, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, well, that'd be all right. Could do that. One Gax Hopfra nest. There we go. And I got one research paper to do. Ooh, got a bunch of beetles. Well, I don't. So I can't get into the habit of doing extra long live streams. And the reason for that is I actually work on Fridays and I have other things I have to do like schedule all of our social media for the coming week and attend meetings and fill out reports and I got I got stuff happening usually uh, write and or distributing release notes for the following week and making sure I'm all up to date so I can't just sort of kill an afternoon streaming so even if it if the raid is only an hour of rating it'll just be an hour of rating maybe maybe I can go you know an extra 15 minutes or so but that's about it It would be nice if I just spent all day live streaming for work and got paid for it, but sadly, and maybe for the best, <laughs> that is not the case. You don't like the sound of the bugs. I can see that. I can see that. All right, I was just uh, going through Twitch chat here.
Uh, I have not heard of any special Hobbit gifts for the anniversary. I don't think we're doing that. Have we done that in the past? I don't think so, right? All right, so I have one more research notebook. Where are you, research notebook? Let's see. Oops, oh, yeah, oh. Did I see something down there, maybe? Well, the research notebooks have been kind of all over, so I'm not sure where this final one is. Oh, right there. Right there. Nice. Okay. Cool. Now I gotta defeat. Uh oh. I gotta defeat a hive queen. Okay. Can I do this? I can do this. Yeah, no problem. That worked good. All right. Nice. Well, that actually worked out pretty good in terms of timing and everything, so. Do you have need of something? Like I, say, I think I think it'll be a little smoother and easier for the live stream here if I drop it to three. I'll probably do that for the next time I run Delving here. All right. Well, that's going to do it with the show then. You can find the... Well, actually, before I wrap things up, let me... There was one thing I wanted to bring up. Uh, let's see. Who is... What do we got going on? So yeah, we have a new show coming up here soon from Master of Dungeons. And let me try to get a start date for that. The start date will be Wednesdays, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Dungeons and Delvings. It's a Locher stream player who's been playing for many years. And uh, it aims to be a new player friendly stream, and I believe it is starting on next week. So that'll the first episode will be the 17th of April. That starts again at noon Eastern. So Master of Dungeons, uh, Dungeons and Delvings, a Locher focused stream for new and returning players. And that's our newest addition to the stream schedule here. So uh, you can find the full schedule over on twitch.tv slash LotraStream. We try to keep the schedule tab updated consistently. And uh, also then, yes, I don't know if I've meant... Oh, <laughs> I mentioned this at the start of the show, but I didn't go into detail. And that is that next Wednesday at 2 p.m., we're going to be having a preview stream with Scenario. Uh, and that'll be... I believe the update 40 landscape area. So I'll get some word out on social media and the forums and the launcher and things about that upcoming preview stream. But that'll be next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash stream. Thanks for being here, everyone. Uh, we've got the Tolkien Professor up next and a lot happening throughout the day and weekend. So have a great weekend, everyone. Talk to you again next week.